Good evening, guys. Um, welcome to the Alliance Cribs round table. Well, I say round table. Hang out mm -hmm. in the crib. It's all good. Um, obviously, we're all doing the raid this week, Brimstone. So, basically, what we're going to talk, be talking about tonight is the Brimstone raid. Everything to do with it. Uh, tips, trips. Yeah. Can't speak. <laughs> tips, tricks. And uh, everything to do with it, so you know, prizes, everything. So, what we're gonna do is just gonna have a chat, have a bit of a laugh, and that's what we're gonna do. So, does anybody want to start off with their uh, things on the raid? I'll give the cheap way to do it if you want. Go for it. Go for it. I, I'm using my Nighthawk fleet. I've hit 47s exclusively. I've spent 16 coin because my wife damn distracted me in one. Uh, and I've got 7.8 million points. D don't give much info how you got distracted. <laughs> well, she just didn't talk to me, man, and I, and I lost track of what I was doing and got nailed in the corner. Do you have Cat 3 and Bat 3 on uh, those Nighthawks, or do you have any of the combo specials? My Nighthawks are built with Magnus Drive, Stealth Attack 3, and Thruster 3, and all Sam, B-12s. And they're ranked, at, they're ranked well, at 64%, I think. Yeah, they're pretty much... Caught. Yeah, they're pretty much the same as mine. I've got, um... Rather than got having the Thrusters on them, I've got, um... a speed system upgrade. Uh, I'll tell you what, I think that the Thrusters... The Thruster 3 on the Nighthawks makes all the difference in the world in survivability and, and getting away from things. And what torps have you got on them? You got the Zs or you got Bs? No, no, I use, I'm a B torp devotee. I love them. I, I, I want the extra range. There you go. That's how you're doing it. Yeah, and they're, they're retro Dar <clears throat> 10 as well. As all friends from, um, from the Bpo, BP. Uh, can't even speak tonight. What's going on? Um, the BP unofficial page. They they turn around and tell us that in 47s there is a thermal range of 60. Even though it doesn't show that, it just shows normal sonar. So apparently well, the protection range is 60. So if you're out on the outside of your your range, whether with Z's or B's, you should be good to do it for nothing. Even even if you screw up a little bit, if you're submerged, then flamethrowers don't hit you under the water for but minuscule damage. Yeah, for sure. I, I used uh, Spectres on 47s. I tried it. Uh, mine were Magnus Drive and, and Battery, and it, it worked. It was really tight. Uh, I don't have any of my Stealth Retro. It was it was just too slow for me, so uh, I mean it works if you're desperate, but it was a little preferred. I just I don't have the fleets to uh, economically hit the siege target. I, it would cost me a buttload of coins to do it that way. Have you been doing it, Bob? Uh, Grim Atlas is my just um, hitting the elites. Just um, yeah, went in there and you go in, you target the first big ship, turn your atlases to about ten o'clock, run your Grimshaw on to about two o'clock. Uh, the big ship follows the Grimshaw on, keep that away, shift key the big ship, kill that first, and then spin your Grimshaw on down south and sort of cut that rocket ship that comes up from the Six o'clock. You sort of, you wanna don't worry about the little ships that much in the first round. Um, go around and as long as you kill that big ship and probably that rocket ship, a couple of little ships, and you know you're gonna die. And then um, yeah, second time around, I usually do it in about one and a half fleets. Um, if you can get a grease monkeys rogue crew, you can usually do it. Pretty cheap, I think it only cost me, I don't know, 
two hundred coins to do the whole raid. Got her done with, you know, one half of the crew much. Is that the elite campaign or is that the um seventy yeah, five? The elite campaign. Has anybody been doing the seventy fives? I tried one, I didn't find it worth the damage. You know, you get two million points and you take just pretty much just as much damage as you do it in an elite. I tried to take subs in there but I got fucked up because, you know, the ships with the thermal as soon as they see you then you know well, yeah, you, yeah, you, that you can't get away in time. Yeah, I, I tried it the same I tried to uh, prep with Nighthawks. Tried it once, never again. <laughs> but yeah. Um yeah, I think tried the same. To be honest though, I I've I've hit a few of the, the seventy five targets with um with Grim Atlas. And if with Grim Atlas with a pinch I can uh, I can clear it out in one go. Uh, which isn't too bad, really, because it, it does about like what is it, just over three three million points, I think. I think it's two, just a, yeah, about two million points for the seventy five. But you think with the elite target, you're getting what probably three million points to kill everything in there, plus the one point five bonus. So if you want to get yeah. it done quickly, you know. So, well, that's fair enough. I I, I know I got, you got the, over three you got million the for the one I yet, but you know, the siege campaign. Um, I don't know. It is easier. It depends what you've got. You know what fleets that you use to do it. The Grim Atlases. You know they didn't work as well as I thought they would in the. You know those rocket ships fuck it up. So. I think it's in the, the number one on the speed campaign. You've got two rocket ships, you take too much damage. So, it's, um, yeah, I found the elites a lot easier, a lot faster, with less damage. All right, fair enough. Um, Rick, how have you been doing? Actually, uh, I tried the 75 and ended up waxing like about four fleets before I was finally done and said the same thing to you that that's enough of that crap. Uh, I haven't tried uh, Elite yet, but I've been doing uh, Siege, and I've been using a Frosty uh, flagship with uh, two masses. It's 100% weight, so it's loaded right up, and I've been doing not too bad. usually get through the first two uh, with no problem and contemplate going in w one more time on, on uh, a third run. I'll get halfway through that, and then that fleet has to go in for repairs, so that's not too bad. It's manageable. And I was doing a bunch of... Uh, 25s, 41s, 43s, whatever on auto, and I noticed I was going through coin like fucking crazy. So uh, I kind of put the brakes on that. The the one fleet I noticed was doing really well on the the 41 and 43s and 45s was my Atlases. To be fair, I think Atlas is doing quite well throughout throughout yeah. right now. I mean, I I know that I've used my um, my Grim Atlas fleet to do the siege campaign. And it's, it's been pretty good to be honest like what I usually do is it's like I can probably do to start off with I'll do like one two three and four and then I'll have to repair it I'll finish off four and five and then I'll end up coming back to three again and then repair it again for four five and then back to three so it's not been too bad for me really but to be to be clear, you guys are using Harlock atlases, right? Yeah. I'm, Actually, using, uh, I'm using regular. Yeah, me too. I'm using a uh, regular atlases R5. Uh, the UAV V's on them are RA5, and also the uh, armor is uh, two. Pardon me, uh, R15. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've I've used Grim Harlock. Yeah, right. Not a lot of people have got it, or whatever. But you know, it's it's done really well for me, to be honest. Um, I mean, the normal yeah. is still still actually just as good. Well, it is. It is pretty much the the only difference between it is the um, really the pinch UAVs. It's about the only the only difference, and the only difference that that's really made, to be honest, is if you're gonna hit 
one of the seventy-five really the mothership. All the camp, all the campaign, all the campaign for them rocket ships. Yeah, well, yeah, but it doesn't really. It stops does make that a rocket, difference. Stops that, stops that rocket ship getting on top of your groom, so it lasts longer. Well, yeah, it does. But the the biggest difference, to be honest, is in in the uh, mothership one. So I don't know. It's one of those. I mean, the forties can be done for minimal damage. But in other oh, yeah, they can. I mean, you can do the forty-seven for for no damage at all if you want to take the time with, with the subs. Yeah, you know, it's pretty good for doing it for no damage. All you got to remember is that you know there is they have got sonar. They will fire at you with mm -hmm. the, with the throwers, but. And another thing, I mean, like I say, I mean, we d we had that campaign with the the cruising. If you got, if you got a grease monkey, definitely use that. Cause oh, that's like that's valuable. Massively, massively. I mean, that, that cuts your repairs down so much. Obviously, you know, it's a quart, quarter, quarter, it? So. Well, this is it. You've got half repairs, and uh, the grease monkey makes it quarter. So, definitely okay. use it if you've got it. Has anybody noticed uh, there's rumors flying around that the half repair ain't quite half repair? Has anybody noticed that in their uh, No, I mean, I know, I know that me, Bomb, and a few people did notice that in the Elites, the res was all screwed up. The res that he was actually gaining was all screwed up. I, I had seen some posts in different pages that people were saying it wasn't quite, it was only like 35 to 40% reduction in the uh, repair times on this raid. So I don't know if anybody wants to pay attention to that or not. No, uh, actually, I, I noticed my uh, coin repair has been uh, cut right in half. So maybe people have to tell or something. Yeah, but like I mean, I mean, we was we was hitting the elites and we was getting I don't know four million or something rares, whatever. Which obviously the you know the fleet can carry a lot more than that, and it's like eight million or something to repair. So you're actually losing rares. Whether that's I, I, what it's supposed I, to be, I don't know. Actually, I, I have noticed that uh, where, you know, you, you blow, uh, blow up a whole bunch of uh, 41s, 43s, and whatever, and I noticed myself out of res, I was like, holy crap, that's the first time that's ever happened in, yeah. in, in a raid. It doesn't, seem, it doesn't seem to happen in the siege, but it seems to happen in a few of them. One of my alliance mates was doing siege with Kodiaks, and he ran out of res. It's like the res that it's like the res that you're gaining compared to your, the res you need to repair is yeah. all out of whack. I'm doing what uh what Rig's doing. I, I'm running a, a frost burn with two mastodons, except my mastodons I they don't have any armor on them, so I just zombie them anyway. And so it, it sometimes takes me a couple trips, but I'm 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 res positive because the only thing I'm fixing is my frost burn. That's that's a good tip there, though. <laughs> Let's be honest. If you can keep yeah, the yeah, it's, it's out of the way, for me. yeah. If you can keep the master ones out of the way, then it's going to work really well for you. Yeah. How are you doing it, Payne? Uh, fuck it, mate. I've already done it. I think I've hit one and a half forty-seven, and that's it. Um, simply because I've been sleeping or busy doing other things. Um, I'm probably going to crack on today and tomorrow and just like hit a few more 407s and then just whack out a few elites or something like what everyone else has been doing. Alright, fair play. I definitely, like I said, I definitely mean that subs thing on the uh, 47s for, you know, if you can do it for no damage, providing you drive correctly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what I started doing, it just takes too much time. I don't have much time this weekend. You know, I've got to go out with the kids on Sunday, so I've only really got Saturday to do it. And I don't think I want to sit there and hit subs all day, all Saturday. Yeah, yeah I've, I've put about eight hours in to get where I'm at right now. Because, yeah, over 200 hits on a 47 can take you a whole while, especially because you need 10 minutes at least to kill them. Oh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I can do it in about seven minutes, but that's just me being an arsehole. <laughs> oh, you do by now. Uh, I have not even started it, so I cannot. I don't know. It's, it's for videos I have been watching. 
Welcome, to, how are you? I'm alright, how are you, lad? Not too bad, but not too bad. Have you been doing your raid? Um, I finished about half hour ago. So what have you been doing to get it done? Um, I've been doing a mix. I've been doing a 75s, popping in and out of 47s while fleets are repairing, and just doing a siege. But I have got one tip. I've seen people running around with the grease monkeys on the fleet. Why don't you just use your grease monkeys in your base, leave them in your base, drop another crew onto your fleet that you're using, and just swap the fleets about? You actually save yourself two or three coins every time you go out as well. Well, yeah, you will. Depends on what, obviously, what fleets you're using. But, yeah, if you, you're going to get the benefit. Well, half of the benefit from it. Well, it's, like, like it's, like having a, it's like having a Midnight Marauders crew on your fleet, plus having half the have... repair on it. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's yeah. The point was that it was 40% resistance yeah. um, that you got with that as well is why everyone was running it. Yeah. yeah, but I didn't really see the benefit of it. I found it was a lot easier and saved me coins if I used the bullseye crew on with the fleets I was using. Yeah, well, it, it depends on what you're going to use, though, doesn't it, really? You know, it's... Same as anything in this game, you've got to weigh it up as to which is going to be more beneficial. You know, if you've not got a great resistance to everything, then use grease monkeys. If you haven't, if you've got really good resistances, leave it and on the dock. And obviously, missiles as well. If you're using the missile crew, obviously bullseye or yeah, for sure. Eyes. Well, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna increase your your damage per second by masses. The option of the tools of the day. Has anybody tried uh, rolling for crews? Like, uh, what's that like? I know sometimes, yeah, you roll and you just see garbage for you know twenty minutes, whatever. Well, I, I a lot of garbage. Yeah, it's been a joke. I, yeah, I I tried rolling some, and basically all I've got really, I mean, I was doing like five hundred rolls, trying to get some. Some bullseyes and stuff like that, because you usually you can get like a, a bullseye brigade in probably like three, maybe four rolls, five hundred. Um, and I ended up doing like ten rolls, no bullseye brigades, but like seven uh, junkyard dogs. Or salt. <laughs> or, or the, the ranking yeah, or, or completing it a rubbish. Yeah, so. You know, I wasn't very impressed earlier, and I thought, well, I'll just go with what I've got, because, let's be honest, I'm not going to get anything better. Has anybody had any problems with uh, alliances that uh, are kind of a little butthurt over some of the things and trying to snipe your fleets outside your base? I, uh, I, I know one person that's having that problem. There's, there's something that, that I do to avoid that, so I'm still managing to do the raid and just laugh at him. See, I've been, <laughs> complete, I've been the complete opposite. Uh, as some, pe <laughs> some people may have noticed, um, I made a post yesterday about uh, Sector 469. They decided they were going to boycott the raid, so they, um, they spent all day putting fleets together to try and spell out boycott. He got to boyka and like half of a T. So uh, me and my alliance decided that we were going to make the rest of the T and then we just smashed it. <laughs> it did well, amuse me somewhat. But, <laughs> but what I've done is seems that I know it's a... Uh... You know, somebody that has a problem with me, I'll end up sniping a fleet, maybe one or two, and I, I'm noticing, okay, I got some people outside my base, Nighthawks, whatever. I'll launch my fleet, and I'll move it the uh, length of the page, like keep it in transit so that it's moving. Click on a tower, click uh, attack or combat or whatever it is, the fleet will turn around, come back, and hit it. That way I'm still able to do the raid no matter how many uh, Nighthawks I have, uh, I have outside my base. So if you're having that issue, that might help. 
That's a good tip, mate. Anybody else want to stick in any tips? I think, I think we covered all tips, boys. Want to move on to the actual prizes itself? If yeah, why there, not? Kind of. so, so, no ship then? I know a couple of people in here have got one. Myself included. Who wants to start it off? I've got a hit by one. <laughs> really? Do you want to start it off with him? Uh, oh, he died. <laughs> but, <laughs> it, it looks a good hole, but it's just finding a good use for it. Um, finding the right build. Yes, the guy had it with um, Hellhounds, and they had throwers on it, but what I could make out was the playback's not 100%. He had missiles on his normal, on the RAF. So I don't think it was a good combination. No, it has to be just missiles. If you're going to use, if you're going to utilize that, it boosts missiles. So you're going to have to use missiles. Yeah, definitely. I'll agree with that. You know, at the end of the day, if you're going to use it, it's it's a missile. It's designed for missiles. Or so you can use it. Purpose. Or use it as a tank. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can use it as a tank, but why not just use it as a tank for missiles? It's, at the end of the day, it's really it's designed as a tank for mastodons, really. So, and you can always drop another hellhound in with it, or a jug X, or yeah, you know. Because I know uh, I watched a video of Santana's. If you've seen that on the on the uh, crew page, I watched a video of that hitting Santa Cruz, and he had the, the new ship, two mastodons and two jug X, and it worked really nice. Well, yeah, because all he's done is just replaced his, his scrimshine because it's given an extra 50% reload on his missile. It's all good. Anybody want to chip, chirp in or not? Just... I mean, I, I said it, uh, I think last time, I, you know, putting siege battery on it's probably really nice. Uh, buzzards, if you got them. There's, there's, there's I think... Good ways to build that hull, but but I, I think it's going to take some uh, its own set of skills to use it right. People are still figuring it out. That was the hit on my base. All we've got is your uh, file index, mate. We ain't got no video or anything. Yeah, I see girls there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen midgets and poles. <laughs> I've sent you the picture, um, Earth, if you want to share it. Oh, see if I can find it. S send it to me, if not, and I will probably shoot. Uh, actually, uh, w with this new haul coming out, <clears throat> I heard like all kinds of ideas about you know what to put on it and what to group it with, that kind of thing. Just curious, maybe uh, what the uh, panel's idea is about what they're going to put on. Obviously, the you see stuff with missiles on it, and uh, Siege Battery Three is just too costly for weight. I've, I've been putting Siege Battery Two on on a, a lot of things just because of the weight. Eh? Do you mean something? I I it. It took me a long time, but I uh, I came up with with the build for it, and I I sort of went both ways with it. Um, I didn't use siege battery on on the actual hull, the new hull, but um, I used siege battery on two other spotters, and it it fits in nicely and works well. So it's a bit sort of um, how you're going to hit bases, really? Mm. To be honest, you know it's it's really it's a really good lead ship for mastodons, but you you got to think about what you're going to put in the rest of the fleet. Or if I didn't really hear anything after you said you went both ways. <laughs> speak no, English, please. Speak English. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Mike. I do, I do apologise. Yeah. yeah, I think bomb bombs using the uh the the new ship. I think 
Is that the new ship in there, Bomb? Are you there, Bombard? He's muted. <laughs> Jeffrey! Speak up, yeah, Jeffrey. That, the, that yeah, the new ship in there with the Mastodons. Yeah, new ship, two hellhounds and the uh, Mastodons. It's going alright. Oh, yeah, see, no, no. That would be an actually a really interesting setup, considering your mastodons are already fed with missiles and stuff too, right? So, yeah, I just didn't know what else to put it with. <laughs> so there, there's that, yeah. there's that fire, that fire mortar thing from the uh, hellhound that just launched. See it on the floor, launching its random fire yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, it Nate. seems like a bit of a beast hole, to be honest. Nice bombard. Stop with the right fleet. I'm jealous. Yeah, it's just a tank. I'm just. I don't know if I was gonna, you know, trade it out for my frosty or whatever and put it with my Kodiaks, but I don't know. I saw what you said with the with the new that new armor in the uh, the mini. If you can get your hands on it, you can really beef it up. Yeah, no, I wasn't going to coin it because I'm away working at the moment, but then Scotty turns around and says that he coined it, so I had to. <laughs> Copycat. <laughs> but yeah, I've actually, I've actually dropped missiles on and uh, ranked mine up a little bit to 60 and tested it out with my Kodiaks, and it works really nice. I mean, I can, I can drop mine in with my Kodiaks or my uh, Jug X and two Mastodons and my house as well. So I've sort of like made it universal across my fleets. Uh, I'm actually a, a little embarrassed that I, I didn't even give the fucking uh, Road Cruise uh, any thought. Uh, some of the panel was mentioning pre-show there about uh, the Grease Monkeys. Obviously that, that's what I'm going to try as soon as I'm done this show. Yeah, Grease Monkeys, or if you. Or I would not uh, forget the bull sides, because most of you are using missiles as well. Probably yeah, the best I tool. I had that Grease Monkey, I have to try that. So, the, what David said makes quite, uh, quite sense. Use the bull side to increase the, the damage you are doing, so you could the damage you, you get, killing faster, and the Grease Monkeys in the base, just using it to repair. In a slot just for repairing ship, all the ships you could be using, especially if you are using more than one. Has, yep. has anybody taken a look at the leaderboards lately? Yeah, it's wow down. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. there's definitely uh, the, the percentages of people that were using the glitch fix. <laughs> it's showing. I'm looking now. The number six in the world is uh, 90 million. Imagine that. The top's only 126 million. That's still a lot, though. Yeah, that is still a lot of points, but I mean, it ain't nowhere near it's been the last half a dozen raids. And uh, I know it's one of the people on there, um, Tuffy Two Inch, that was normally like 400 million. A lot that's four raids. Anything on the, ain't even on the front page. Ouch. He was doing like 400 million or something each raid or something. To get first or whatever, I don't know. But he ended yeah. up on the first couple of pages, I don't think. Well, yeah, well, but and, you know, if you see that the guy has that many millions on Kickside, wants to see how much he has invested in the uh, rate, and he doesn't see numbers that are quite um, balanced, uh, points he got, and ways you, you do, because, well, you can tell me that you can do with sub for no damage, but not in two hours. So they knew exactly what was happening. I mean, like I said, it, to me, it's just showing how many people were doing that. Yeah. Well, the the other thing I noticed is, you know, I, I got this uh, lower level base in uh, in a sector, and and it's it's um, I got like six million points from doing the the strike campaign. He's number number nine in the sector with six million points. <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> I mean, that wouldn't be top 100 in the last raid, you know? Well, uh, speaking about Kickstarter's response to you, one thing I have noticed is uh, in the last couple of days, there are a lot of people are, are getting banned, like lots. And it's obviously not, not for glitch repairing and stuff. So, you know, something's being done on their, their end uh, about it. I just looked in my sector. I'm sitting at 7.6 mil, and I'm number 11 in the sector. Yeah. Uh, I spent 100 bucks and managed to reach uh, first place in my sector after three, four hours. But, you know, spent a, a, a lot of uh, fleets stupidly on it just to try and figure out what the hell works. Well, I've only spent the 16 coin my wife cost me. <laughs> Be thankful that's all it costs you because, uh, like I was saying, I alternate raids with, with my wife, whatever, and she's due for an instant haul, an instant rank, whatever, so it's going to cost a lot more than 16 coins. Oh, you have no idea how much i got to suck up to get coin money. I think the raids cost me about 300, 350 coins. Which... I, I will... I will probably put that Grease Monkeys crew on when we're done here, but I'll probably coin for 90 minutes to get as many points as I can, which will be, what, maybe 100, 150 coins? Right. Uh, to, to be honest, I, I totally forgot I even had it after that uh, that last new campaign that came out offering roll crews and stuff, and I believe well, one of them was uh, the uh, Grease Monkeys. That's right. Yeah, that's where I got it from the campaign. I don't, I don't roll for Legendary Crews. Well, I've been really good, really, to be honest. I'm, you know, I got Chris Monkeys from uh, the road crew thing that we've done, the road campaign. So I've got one of those from there, and I've, I've had another two saved up as well. Yeah, so, I can see my screen. I've gone so in with I've the done, uh, So I've, I've, done, um, I've done most of it for hardly anything, really. You know, I've done... Uh, I got to the ship for like what about 100, 150 coins. So it's all good, really. I'll be surprised if I make the ship this time. Yeah, the that that's that new ship with the uh, the Kodiaks. I mean, the reload the reload's insane on it. Yeah, and it doesn't want to go down. Yeah, definitely. That's <laughs> Has, any, has anybody uh, gave that, that other prize uh, any thought there, that new uh, Motar thing? Yeah, Mastodons, actually especially, especially with this new especially with this new hall now. I mean, Mastodons are going to be used quite a bit again. So. Yeah, that that's the main reason I'm going went for the raid, is I want to get that order. I, I think it can be advantageous. Well, it will, because it's like we, like we said on um, Wednesday's show. You know, you need 28 hail bees to shoot down all of the salvos from warm water. Well, with, really. the, with, the, with the range it has on it, I can put it on my island the way I'm set up, and it'll cover the front of my channel where I got all my serves and they got to stop. Well, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying, you know. you got there's 28 hail bees take it takes to shoot down just all of the salvos from one water. So, you know, you stick mm -hmm. four or five of those in. But are you taking into account with the uh, rank of the ships as well? And also, it, also you've got oh, to think no. the, the flak, built-in flak of aid on the medium water itself is like, what, 85% or something? Yeah, yeah 85%. Yeah, that's what I mean. Work it, working out the, the flak of aid, just as standardised, you know, you need 28 as a standard thing, you need 28 hail bees to shoot down one water at normal rank. Without obviously adding in the rank, rank into the consideration, that's what you need to shoot down a whole mortar. It's just got a, it's got a salvo of four in it. So, has anybody seen that new, new mortar uh, hitting a base yet, or no? Uh, no, I was tempted to put one in, and then I did the rank on the what? new ship instead. One of my um, teammates hit um, a hits member, and he had two in his base, and he said it was 
I mean, I haven't, I haven't even looked at the bill time on them. I saw somewhere it's seven days. Eight. Yeah. A uh, new to it. It's actually reasonable for once. I was gonna say that's not actually bad considering what we have been getting. Yeah. That's been to go with twenty something days. days. Yeah, yeah it's like days. six days and like three or four hours, I think. Or maybe and you also hours. don't need a level six platform to use it. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. no, 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 no. need decent fucking specials on it. You can only put side loader two on it. Yeah. Yeah, or that one, or the, or that one from the drug bases, the field support no, exam was take, giving you fifty percent reward. Take it out. 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 it Take it out. Take it out. Take it out. Take it it takes it Using to five, uh, takes it to uh, four one two five or something like along those lines. Uh, With I the fast board X, about... it takes it up to four two seven five, and that's you know way too much. Even with side loader three. No, not this one. It's, it's another one. Uh, it's the one that gives you fifty percent reload and forty percent missile resistance. It's that a front line front line support exam or something like. Yeah. That's Do you think it means it might bring level six Well, com compared to the last couple raids, the weapons and the whole build times, you you got to give Kickside credit that they cut the build times down on the top rise. Yeah, they they've cut the build times down massively, you know, but let's be honest, they've like tripled the damage from last raid, didn't they? So you know it's like it's it's fair enough give and take, but you know considering what last raid was like to this one, and the decrease in in the build time compared to the more more damage you're taking, you know it's it's not really fair. Yeah, really. I mean I, I did find it was ironic that how they put the campaign in for the crews just before with the grease monkeys. Well, do you do you think that this uh, the difficulty of the raid is still re reflecting the the glitching that was going on, and maybe it's going to even itself out to get back to a reasonable level? Well, th I think they've done it the same to get an idea of you know how many people was actually glitching and what people was actually spending. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. The next raid, next raid might get some adjustments. Cause I know, I know, I know the repair times suck, but there wasn't actually getting accurate reading of what people were spending because of the right. repair. Right, they're they're, they're still uh, trying to map things out. There was uh, one thing that was just shared with me a, a moment ago with regards to uh, the uh, grease monkeys. It's uh, sixty coin uh, renew the uh, road crew, which is well worth it, only a quarter of the, of the repair. And I just seen on. Uh, Bombard's fleets, how we had a few empty slots there with uh, road crews attached. I, I do that quite a bit, actually. If you uh, yeah, don't want to send a fleet cruise. out, right, just re remove the fleets, put them, put them in a, another slot, and if you decide to use a certain road crew, whatever, then you can install them again. Uh, I, use, I use that quite frequently. And after you can max out your crews that way as well. Exactly. So, uh, hey, Rick, I'm going to disagree. I, I don't think the... Uh, I, I didn't renew my um, uh, Grease Monkeys. I didn't think it was worth it for 60 Because so I did, you know, maybe two or three run-throughs of the campaign, and they're costing me like 25 each without the crew. So, you know, even if they're costing me 12 each with the crew, um, it, you know, cutting, cutting, what, 36 coins off wasn't worth paying 60. Uh, another crew that is handy to use uh, if you're in campaigns and stuff is the demo squad if you do have one lying around. Demo squad helps as well. Well, yeah, because it's uh, plus 40% on all, um, all damage types. Professor, get in mind that you are just repairing a single ship and they are repairing a full fleet, so maybe for yeah. a single ship it's not as worth. Uh, so when you repair the full fleet, because they cannot go with zombie hardlocks like you can do zombie yeah. master. Yeah. That's yeah, all. I mean, I was, that's I was, what I was getting at. Before, you so. can be repairing another fleet with the grease monkeys while you're out gallivanting with the other fleet and just swapping them over, so you're getting a repair on both fleets. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, grease monkeys is really good because you know you don't have to 
use it on a crew, you know, just use it on one feet and and attack with it and do whatever. You can leave it in your dock and you can just switch all your fleets into that one and then repair it. Which is sort of a bonus. Yeah, but but sixty coins is a lot. I mean, if if you if you are spending, well, it's a lot. You know, like a hundred and twenty coins over that hour and a half, then then maybe it's worth it. But but if you're not, it it might not be. So you got to think about it. It's it's definitely not automatically a good thing to renew that. Oh, for sure. Uh, uh, okay, not. now now that we were talking about uh, having empty slots, removing your fleet. Leaving that rogue crew there, and then bringing a, a, another damaged fleet. Has anyone tried that? Where you can repair it for even cheaper using that rogue crew? That's what I was doing. What well, fleet was repairing while I was out hitting something else. And it's not just the raid either, because you know people get bored during the raid and they go and hit bases. I mean, well, you know, it might just be me. I. I get bored and, yeah. and I go off and hit some bases, get some really good fan mail. Oh, why are you hitting bases during the raid? People should not hit bases during the raid. What are you doing? <laughs> it's a lot like I mean, one of, one of our guys actually got a me like I said, one of our guys got a message saying that um, uh, I'm not going to report you this time, but you do know there's not you're not going to hit during the raid. <laughs> <laughs> Just be aware that people report, yeah. you, you know, actually, I would love to see a, a raid take that direction where it wasn't all this uh, brimstone and, and all this other kind of crap, whatever, if it was just attack bases, alliance bases, whatever, and you were uh, given a certain amount, amount of points for that. You know, that, you that what, way, like, everybody would have fun. Yeah, I, I'd be done in about like 40 minutes. <laughs> it's because you're a cunt. But you know, honestly, though, it, it would be a, it would be a lot of fun. I think the BP in there, guys posted some prelim info about about an alliance war and and something like that. Actually, that was, that yeah, was yeah. But it it's the same as the alliance war last time. It was you know, uh, it goes by the top alliances in each world. Um, most amount of medals. Well. It's not really going to change that much because the people at the top of the leaderboards, let's be honest, most of the time they're the frubbling little frubble queens, aren't they? So, Except yeah. for one group. Yeah, bomb, bomb's hitting someone now with that new shit. Yeah, how it does. It's, I think well, that's not my base. <laughs> he always smashes my base and I hate it. <laughs> Have you used this ship yet, bomb, in a base? No, I've been using my mastodons for ages, man. Uh, I used to hate logging on and whatever and see my base in fucking dust. I'm like, you know, it would tell you uh, who who hit your base. I'm like, fucking bombard again. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I get fucking abusive mail constantly, like every day. Again. What have you done to my base? But I'll tell you what, though. Every time fucking he hit my base, ever I'd always uh, learn something from it. Oh, every time, mate. Every time. I, I love getting. I love getting the hate mail when you hit uh, the base. To be honest, I actually don't mind getting flat. I just send honest, back to them. I yeah. like the haters, and it really pisses them off. No one minds getting flat if the person yeah, doesn't. If person doesn't use five or six rockets. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, it's it's one of them. You're never going to be able to guard against everything. There was a point when you could, but now it's just too much. Yeah, you can't. There's no way you can. No, well, yeah, the only problem is how many God? What's the percentage of people that aren't hitting bases anymore? Did you see that? Did you see that mortar thing blow that ship up? Yeah, that Harlock went down quick. That that, mor that mortar thing hit that Harlock, and that Harlock exploded. Oh, it looks like nice. he's got to lose that wrath. So I anyway. found there is fucking <laughs> dead or killed all my mastodons. Ah, oh, good. With the smart the, warhead. Uh, yeah, smart warheads and the less armor. Well, that's gonna be a way. That's gonna be a way. That's gonna be a way to go though, as well. One mod's actually going to fail the base. What's going on there? Yeah, well, it happens. 
Well, that's very true. Everybody, everybody that's that. Yeah, that, that's that, that's going to be very handy now. I'm glad they stopped that Wendigo slow, though. Yeah. Oh, for you sure, mate. Your feet. So has anybody got any advice to anybody who wants to build a new ship? Yes, I'm all ears. Give me uh, as much. I mean, if you haven't got the if you haven't got the coin, quit a seven day repair. Um, build it seven blank. Seven day repair. Should... Well, sorry, sorry, seven day build. Seven obviously day blank. Build. <laughs> I know what I meant. Uh, build it, build it blank, uh, and just use it for uh, your mastodons or something. I don't think a seven day repair actually sounds too out of the ordinary for kickside to be honest. No, nah. well, that's very true. If it gives them time. But yeah, build build it blank. Obviously, no, it'd be a quicker build. Um, and use it as, use it for your mastodon spar. I mean, you could even use it for dredges and stuff to take less damage. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's got a hundred 150% modifier on it, but you know, it's going to be good. It's the same as having a savage and a grimshine in your fleet. So, you know, well, I think if you if you, if you can use it correctly, I mean, you take a, and you take say, I don't know. A quarter of that damage or something to that ship, you know, obviously less repair and your master on. If you're your master on's right, they won't take damage. Yeah, exactly. So for chores, for chores and stuff like that, it'll be, you know. The only issue is that it doesn't give you the resilience resistance that the Grimshaw was giving. So if you are counting with that, it's going to get you a lot more damage. But you have the the reload and the salvo 300 percent, so that's going to be good for you. Oh, definitely. And after the, the you know the pinches and stuff that it throws out, and then then more three things, so you got the increased damage from that. Yeah, the pinch resistance I see it more used than to the explosions that we were seeing because if there is nothing around you on that sixty, unless these speed drones, you're mm -hmm. not going to kill much. I, mean, I, I don't know. I mean, like I mean, in that hit that bomb just done, you know that that mortar thing hit that harlock and it exploded. That mortar thing just like tore that. Harlock up in one in one shot. Has uh, has anyone used any uh, of the new retrofit package uh, for this hull? Like uh, um, Hell Strikes or R10, um, MXCs or no R10? Has, has any anyone explored that that, that avenue? Even in the raid? Yeah. I, I did one hit with my Hell Strikes and they got destroyed. They did like. No damage and just what got you got in your house? Uh, three Infernos, three S, uh, Firestorm S. Uh, they have siege battery. They're they're a little more set up for bases, but uh, yeah, uh, they they just scratched the enemy. It was it was terrible. It was it was. Oh. I, I mean, I got hit, I got hit by an evil mortar fleet with a uh, house strikes. I think this new generation of rivers have a lot of CP4 armors alike. It's likely on the dredges. I remember the first time I tried them, and three hell strikes, and I could only do 50% damage to the whole uh, ship on Dia. And I guess it's the same in this raid. So rockets is not the best idea to hit them. Yeah. Well, they go so fast. And I brought I brought an engine disruptor arb, but that that arb went down so quick, and then and then the hells were just missing. Yeah, well, it's it's been bad for that. Um, I can actually, in one sec, if uh, anybody wants to carry on, I'm just going to go and look it up because um, I know that the unofficial blog site uh, posted a thing about what what's on what. So I can tell you a little bit about what's on what fleets. If you want to wait for a minute, I'll come and find it. So talk about yeah, yourselves, okay. and I'll let you know in a minute. You say talk about ourselves. Do you mean talk amongst yourselves? Well, yeah, you, you know what I meant. <laughs> no. Oh, sorry, I do apologise, mate. Well, you know, the only so thing I would say is I, I think at New Hall's an awesome hall. But guys that are like me that don't want to spend a lot of coin and are real worried about repair time think twice about getting it because of the repair modifier. Yeah. Oh yeah, the repair modifier is sucky, but like I say, if it's built, you know, right with um, low armored mastodons or whatever, 
and you, if you you know you're taking minuscule damage for like your chores, not so much for bases because obviously you know, <coughs> it might die, but for chores and stuff, if it was taking minimal damage. Uh, I, had, I hadn't thought about that, but I'm talking about the guys that want to use it for base and oh yeah, for bases, yeah. And stuff, if you, and, you know, if you you're, you're gonna, have, it's gonna sit a lot. If yeah. You don't want to spend the coin on it. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. But I think, like I say, for things like you know your mini raid and that, if if that ship's that strong, you know, it will take say a quarter damage or something in 65 or whatever. Your mass on to take nothing. You know, you repair it for a few hours and then you're out again. Kind of thing. Well, like I said, I'm just trying to tell you know the guys that don't want to spend a lot of coin. It's just something they need to think about. <clears throat> oh, definitely. Yeah, this is interesting. They got a lot of concussive defense. See, See, I'm a, a cheap bastard. I don't, I don't, I've not built any of the Reaver hulls yet, just because of the repair modifier. I'm still seeing a lot of them have evade a zero. So that's yeah. basically probably it's probably one of the reasons they brought Reavers back for repair modifiers, because you know they're expensive. They're expensive to climb back, and they're trying to make the money. They're trying to make money, but it's just you know they're going about it the wrong way. To be fair, though, in the, in the actual raid. Um, for example, in in the forty seven, uh, got thirty here. So uh, a return hellhound from the forty seven has uh, thermal of seventy. Even though this this is what cracks me up is that it doesn't show thermal whatsoever in the actual target itself. We've only got white ring which designates sonar. Um, sonar range is 60, but <coughs> thermal detection is 70, even though it doesn't show it. Uh, I, think it's, uh, I, think it's the, uh, I think it's one of the new ships that has it. Uh, you got like a combat speed of th 32, which is he's just insane, really, let's be honest. Uh, you know, what's realistically, for lower levels, for instance, like, What's the maximum combat speed to outrun stuff that they're going to have? What's going to be like 22, something like that? Well, is it about 24, 25 with uh, the BC, which you can get in the missions? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? 32 is going to going to run them down pretty quick, and let's be honest, <clears throat> BCs aren't going to be. You know, killing them quick enough. No, I actually put my uh, my vins with my engine disruptor. Look, like Larry said it just doesn't last long enough for you to do anything constructive with the fleet. So, what's people's thoughts on the uh, new engine then? Well, I don't know. To be honest, I mean, I'm quite I haven't really thought about it much. To be honest. Well, yeah, I'm. I'm it's quite a bit, a bit heavy, isn't it? Really. I was thinking Cudas, but you know. Yeah, but the thing is with it, it is uh, it charges up, doesn't it? So it goes from like a, a zero, a zero yeah. gain basically, and uh, it it basically doubles up the amount of armor points that are taken out during the battle. <coughs> so you know, if you're gonna have like a, a specter with about seven thousand armor points, or whatever. Fucking no, I've just been insane, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Seven thousand armor. I'm spending. I mean, yeah. the Kudos when you get into our ten now, they you know they can take a lot of weight. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's if you got like a Spectre, for instance, with like seven thousand armor points, because you use you use the new special, and just run it into somebody, you know, you're gonna get like fifteen thousand damage, aren't you? But. They're in more than new armor know. as well. Yeah. Exactly. But. You know, I don't, I don't know how it's going to work, really. You know, in the in the video, it didn't really seem to do that much damage to me. Like I say, it's, it's more of a fleet v fleet thing than anything. I mean, you know, maybe a maybe a rush fleet or you know, some some yeah. use for fleet v fleet. But with the repair time, it's going to be a damn expensive weapon to use. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's why. That's why. That's why I was thinking Kudos, So you know. Kudos yeah, are a massive, you know, you can zombie them kind of thing, and yeah, but they're they're not going on with Kudos. Yeah, but that's not gonna, that's gonna not make any difference because it, it charges up during during your battle, so uh, it, it doesn't matter how many 
armor points you start off with, you can't go, like, oh, I've got 14 armor points, so I'm going to ram it into them and do loads of damage because it ramps up from your original, at the start of the battle, whatever your armor points you've got and whatever damage you take. It like doubles the damage that you take. So, if you've got 14 armor points and you blow up when you die, you only get 28. And that's usually points. what my cooters have for armor points is 14. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's it's not going to work well for that. It's it's going to work well for like really high armor point ships. So, for instance, the new the new limited hull. <laughs> If you, if you bosh it out, I mean, the maximum you can get that to is like about what, 45,000 arm points? Yeah, which uh, is insane. Yeah, and the, and the special turns out at like maximum 30, so it'll, it ramps up until maximum 30,000 arm points. <coughs> when, it, when it dies, it gives off a, like a shockwave that does 30,000 damage. So it's like. You know, it's it's one of them, really. I don't think it's going to be really beneficial to anything, other than to people who like to waste fleets. I don't I, think that's going to be. I look at I look at that. That's 600 penalty that you get in that special, the only one so far we have seen, and to recover from that, even from 14 to 11 percent, that it was the the penalty. You got to. You were needing something that was twenty thousand uh, uh, tons. So you don't have anything like that. So you're just increasing the the weight of your fleet that you could be using probably in something better. Because with subs getting in the base and prepping, maybe it's it's worth. But if you die on the channel, you are not going to do much damage to anything just for that explosion. So I will put more weapons or more armor instead of. That it did, because you have other NGs that are going to give you the same speed. I, I agree with you, Tito. I, I don't see it as being very useful myself. No, I, I plan on, on, on getting it just in case, but uh, that's my biggest problem with, with the weight of fleets. I always look at armor, not to sacrifice weapons, and I'm very cautious on what specials I pick to not sacrifice that weight. Uh, I always want the armor, the weapons, to either take out fleets or bases. Yeah, well, let's be honest, right? Most of, the, mostly the only use for it really is in a de defense fleet in the base whilst you're online. You know, where you can drive it into somebody who's attacking your base and go, hey, here we go, let's, let's kamikaze it and uh, and we'll do some damage. That's about the only real use for the new special, really. Yeah, but that, but that ARF only helps you once because the second time you hit the same base, you know exactly what he has, so you are going to try to kill it from the distance, right? Well, exactly, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah? It's going gonna, it's gonna to help you out in that way. I can't really see it helping out massively in any other way. If, if there, I, I think what most of us are trying to say, if there's other tech that you need in the tree, I wouldn't put this above it. Well, for sure. Without a doubt. I don't, I, I, I don't even think it's as, as good as Engine 3, really, to be honest. Um, w w one last uh, question, just the thoughts of the panel here. I noticed there are, uh, I noticed this a long time ago, or a month like every raid, <clears throat> and then you look at the list of prizes and also the list of prizes on the mini raid. Any ideas if you know they were to back that off, maybe to like every two months, three months? Because obviously it looks like they're running out of material. You know, half the items that I already have. Well, I think for once the 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 stuff they added was at least good. If the people was coming a few months ago, because there were they were adding. The stuff you they, they are needing, like the the armors eggs and and the armors uh, sea, so they can have resistance to the main source of damage from the river weapons and alike. But yeah, for one that has been playing for a long while, they have no interest. I think that the only one I could have taken is was the unstable core two because I never got it when when those dredges came at first. Well, the rivers as they were 
name at that time. Anyone else? Mm. I don't think Kickstarter will ever bring it down to every two to three months raids. No, there's not a chance in fucking hell they're going to do something uh, like that. I think they're not going to change the reports. It's not going to happen. It's never, uh, actually, no. actually this David, way. if you realize, now you have two raids a week, uh, <laughs> a month, sorry, and nearly each weekend you have so, some sort of event. When it's not the... Let let it rock is the let it burn. When it's not let it burn is the arena. When it's not arena is the raid. Exactly. Um, what I'm saying. So they are adding more stuff. It's likely they think that we are not busy enough that they have to put something else. If I were Ben saying about the chores, it's like you know it's getting retarded. Yeah, there's but, always something that they're gonna make you want to coin every single week. It's just you, you do more you do more chores and you are you know attacking other players. Exactly. Actually, I've never even took part in an in a arena event. No, I know. I mean, to be fair, I mean, I I have taken part in the arena event, but not really to sort of, um, let's say, win the arena event or anything like that. So the only reason I the only reason I've done it is because you know you can do it. There's people to play because let's be honest. If I wanted to go into the arena, most of the time, like nine point nine times out of ten. I'm not going to be able to match anybody up in the arena because people just ain't there to play. See, I, I'd love it to change the way the arena worked because you know I've, I mean I won the first the first arena and I put, I've you know I got about 700 games wrapped up and but it's not based on the win to loss ratio. It's based on how many you play. Yeah, it is. It's rubbish. It should really. be based on how many you win to lose. What what, what, you're, basic, what you're basically saying is it's kicks all his maths and it's Broad. Broad? Broad? Kicks I never. <laughs> okay, and now I have another question from the from the panel. We know that if we have read the data miner that they are trying to introduce now the Alliance Wars. Don't you think that they should fix first shady tactics like Frublin before they they introduce that into the game? I don't think most, so. most definitely. Most definitely. Frubbling is like just a, a fucking uh, itch that you can't scratch. It just pisses me off. They need to sort it out, but I'm not even sure they can, to be honest. Now, here's something. your problem. To get rid of it, you're going to have to get rid of any ability to give resources to anyone else. I don't care about it. But I know there's a lot of people who do, people that dump, dump warehouses to people besides just troubling. And if you got <laughs> towards any parameters that shut that down, it's going to shut down any form of register sharing at all. No, no, think about it this way. No, no, no you can't can't stop it because all you got to do is say that if, if you're in my alliance, you can't get a bubble from me. They no, would just use another alliance, wouldn't they? Or just use a non-tag player. Exactly. It, yeah, exactly. But I'm just saying, you can you can at least make it harder for them by saying, I can't bubble my alliance mates. Well, I come up with I come up with something the other day, and um, you know I was just randomly thinking of it because you know we've gone over it in the past and stuff like that, and I thought um, if you're gonna going to be hit by an alliance member, you lose five medals every hour, all the time you, that you bubbled. All right, and I and I thought, you know, that's probably going to work a little bit. It's going to minimise it somewhat, but then you're going to get people obviously with alt accounts and stuff hitting, hitting the alliance. The problem don't bother me as much if they don't something about the guard locking. Yeah, that pisses me off. Just make it, you know, make it so you can't at least can't attack your own alliance members' guard, so they have to get somebody outside to do it. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that 100%. I'm sure Rig does as well. Oh yeah, de de definitely. Uh, I was happy and uh, very pleased that they came up with uh, 30 seconds countdown. Oh, you know, to guarding a base, I was like, fucking sweet. Oh, that's gonna take out most of that crap. And getting rid of, and love, I love the fact that they got rid of the Corvette thing. Corvette gun, gun but I mean, because that was fucking, oh, that was irritating. Didn't even, <laughs> yeah. have, didn't, even have, didn't even have to press guard, they just sit in there. Yeah, but you still got alliances now that, you know, you, you'll go and hit the guard, you'll kill the guard and you'll have your, your baser on its way, and your baser will get there just as you kill the guard, and you go to attack the base, and somebody else jumps in with a fa Phantom Knight fleet, yeah. 
who's underneath yeah, the yeah. base and, and brought or, the base from you. Or, like, there's that, oh. or is there, there's that guard lag where the guard keeps on moving away about three or four times and your base is... Oh, that drives me insane. Oh, you got the guard recording. I lose yeah. about, that lately? I literally lose about like nearly 500 coins a week. Just out then, of that. Has anybody noticed of, it like, lately if the it's fixed door still there or what? No, it still happens, mate. No, yeah. Mm. I literally yeah. lose about 500 coins a week through that. Literally, if I, I go to attack a base and I, all you get is the repeating guard, repeating guard, repeating guard, and then I got snagged by, by phantoms every time without a fail. If they, if, <laughs> if they were to... If they were to fix that, that guard thing, alliance members uh, locking up and that troubling crap, and then go straight to an alliance where, in my opinion, I think they'd bring that this game back to what, what it used to be like years ago. You know, well, fun, bashing get... shit. They need to get a balance, and they're not getting a balance. Yeah. See, the, see, the thing is, though, it's like in my alliance, um, obviously I'm the leader, and I. Tell my like they can do what really much pretty much what they want to do, um, but we don't guard any other bases because at the end of the day, I don't see the point in trying to guard bases and losing fleets because if somebody really wants to get in, they're going to get in anyway. So yeah, what's, well, what's the point in guarding? That's improved against the stig numbers. If you want to yeah. get in a stig base, you'll get in a stig base. Yeah, so you know there's no point in really guarding and if any bases because if, the, if they really want to get in they're going to get in you can send as many fleets as you like to go and try and guard it try and pick people off or whatever it's not going to happen I mean, like, so you've, you've, seen pi- get you've seen pictures where you know a bait that you can't even see the bases is that many fleets around it hitting fleets trying to get in yeah I know well, <laughs> we, all of us have been there many oh time. god I, no I most definitely have. I bet you I've blown like an easy 500 coins just trying to get into one base, just just to prove a point. <laughs> oh yeah, you, I've, got, I've done it strong, mate. Jesus. You're not gonna, you're not gonna beat me. I'm gonna get yeah. it. Oh, I've sent fleet after fleet after fleet after fleet after fleet to go and clear all the guards around and try and get into one base and so. Like, oh, come on. What Look. makes it even worse that you prep a base and you spend half hour trying to get back into it. And when you get, do get back into it, it's coined his card back. Like, ah! see, 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 one thing I would, one aspect I would love if they took out guard control, being able to control your guard. Oh but hell no! I drive my guard fleet every time. But they adapt to make that. They'd have to do it so you know where you set your guard is where it moves every time without fail. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, but the I, thing I is, dis- I disagree with that. I, I think that you should have the ability to drive your guard fleet. I think that yeah, they I should remove the, the war control, but they should make it better and not just those ranges. Maybe like the waypoints. If the guy is in this part of the section of my channel, I want my ships to be here, or when they move to that place, I want them to be there. So that yeah. would remove I mean, the, the need for you to, to drive at times, I think. Well, yes. guys, we are getting at the end of the show. Any last words before we close? Sausages, bananas, cunts, I don't know. I like it. Okay, if you want them to create a complex waypoint system for fleets, remember this is the same company that can't even figure out how to take your dead boat home from next door instead of using a tower. Yeah, I know that they're so smart, much you asked for. I, I know that I'm asking too much for these uh, scripters they have. Uh, that I know. She was born. <laughs> And play and play smarter, bro. I don't just like you know. Yeah, at times, I think I feel likely they are still in that like uh, hello war thing, and they have not passed that first lesson. Someone needs to tell someone as well that Sona and Goliath does not stop subs. Not Especially when the Goliath launches on them. He's got thuds and launches. What the fuck is this base all about? You ain't getting around that channel. I, I do love it. You getting right around there easy. Yeah. Drop a pinch on his serve on his island, it'll be grand. Yeah, for days. Did you just say grand? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It'd be, so, all, uh, it'd be sweet. Thank you very it. much for joining us, right, guys. <laughs> you know, we've been having a laugh and joking and stuff like that. I'm Thank still waking up. Thank you for us. <laughs> Rob's, Rob's still having a laugh and a joke. <laughs> <laughs> You're still asleep. 
led yeah. to Rob Manners well, he's, quiet. he's, he's just woken up now at the end of the show he's, just, he's, he's been quiet for a change it's weird yeah, <laughs> it's madness. yeah now he's awakening I think he's had a couple yeah. of Red Bulls oh. uh, 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 I just want to say thanks uh, even the short time that I've been on uh, with you guys on this show, I've learned tons already. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to ex execute those ideas right away. Absolutely, please. <laughs> <laughs> what would you want to get him around that channel? I got his dog out. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you again next Wednesday yeah. with the weekly show, and then next Friday with the roll yeah. table. So, so next next Wednesday, Wednesday it's going to be uh, 4 p.m. PST, uh, yeah. 12, 12 midnight UK time. So. Um, and the Friday show will be still at 3 p.m. or 4 p.m.? It will still be at 3 p.m., so same time as today's one. I'll try and wake up a bit earlier instead. Yeah. Till well, next time, guys. See you later, chaps. See ya. Yeah. Ladies. <laughs>